Hello, uh, welcome to Bethel Today. My name is Robin Renner. I'm your guest host for this show. And with us as our guest on this show is our first selectman, Matt Knickerbocker. Thank you, Matt, for coming and joining us on the show. Happy sure. to have you. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Before we start talking about a couple things, I do want to share a little anecdote about you. Uh oh, um, should I be nervous? No, it's a good one. <laughs> um, it's summer now. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're having a beautiful summer season, but the past winter was really awful. It was oh, terrible. I think yes. we all want to forget it. But I remember um, we were having trouble at my house. I, as you know, I have a long driveway, right. and it has a steep angle to it. Right. And it, we tried to keep it as clear as we could, but the ice just took over. Right. And we couldn't get oil trucks up our driveway. Right. And I was running really, really low on oil, and I was getting very nervous. And I called you at home mm -hmm. on a weekend. Mm -hmm. And I was panicking. I'm thinking, what, what are we going to do to get oil? Yeah, um, you, you might have been hours away from running out. Yeah, yeah I know. It was, it, was, it, was, it was touch and go. It was. And you were so gracious in taking my call on the weekend and helping us out. And I want to thank you publicly right now for doing oh, that well, and being so yeah. nice about it. That, that, you know, well, that, 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 that's, that's part of the job. I, I enjoy it, but you're, you're welcome. Oh, I, and I'm, and I'm glad he got there. He did. We were, so, we were so nervous. But thank you for that. Sure. Um, since it is summer, uh, it is uh, an election season coming up, and in summer yep. uh, we make announcements, and mm -hmm. so you and Rich Straton just had a big announcement a yes, couple days ago. Can you talk to us about that? Sure. Uh, as, we, as we tape tonight, uh, tonight is uh, Thursday the, what 14th. Is this, the 14th. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rich and I just two days ago made our official announcement that we are seeking re-election. Uh, we would both like a second term. Uh, we both love our jobs. Uh, we enjoy working for the people of Bethel. We enjoy working with the people of Bethel. Uh, I think we have a lot of good programs that we've started that uh, really affect our town, quality of life. And uh, we really want to see it through and uh, we would very much uh, be honored if the voters would give us another, another two-year term. Great. Now, I, um, there was a story in the patch, and I'm going to quote something from uh, the Bethel patch that uh, Richie said, and uh, which also involves you, and he said, and I quote, um, that he was looking forward to building a better Bethel and, uh, along with you. Mm -hmm. And so can you elaborate on that, on that a little bit for us, about oh, what you'd like to sure. do to help build a better Bethel? Well, you know, uh, th that, could, that encompasses so many different things, but let me start with some of the bigger mm -hmm. things that, that we... That we talked about two years ago when we first ran and, and part of our first campaign and in, in a way unfortunately we're, we're still talking about some of the same issues but and the biggest one is still the roads mm -hmm. and I know that some people are thinking oh gosh they're still talking about the roads that's a two-year-old story now but the fact is it's not done right. um, our, our, vo our viewers will probably remember that uh, in the last two years uh, we we proposed a comprehensive four-year plan uh, we proposed an eight and a half million dollar bond issue that would not raise taxes. No, that's because the bond is us borrowing money. That's us bar that's selling a bond. A bond is borrowed money. Okay. It's, a, it's an infrastructure bond, and and the reason that we would use this this bond to to repave these roads that are in really really bad shape. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, I want to circle back to why they're in such bad okay. shape too Fine. in a minute. Mm -hmm. But the reason it makes sense is that Bethel's debt load fall is falling off. So we can we can afford to add a little bit back because in and schools, still have the, it. The debt load on the schools yes. and everything is okay. Yes, the, the middle school mm -hmm. uh, bond was retired. There are at any one time there are you know several bonds and several uh, what they call bond anticipation notes, right? Um, and which is not unusual. Uh, Bethel's debt load is very very low. Uh, it's below 10 percent of its budget, which uh, the investor services consider excellent. So we propose this plan mm -hmm. to um, fix. 31 miles of roads that had really deteriorated badly, especially mm -hmm. in recent years, uh, both downtown and in Stony Hill. Stony mm -hmm. Hill, I think, took the worst hit because of the sewer project. Right. So roads that were already due to be repaved then got torn up for the sewers, and then they never, nothing ever was done to fix right. them. So uh, we were not able to get the Board of Finance to agree to, really all we wanted the Board of Finance to do was let the voters choose. Right. They would not do that, but they did with some reluctance uh, agreed to let a two million dollar one-year plan go through and the voters approved it overwhelmingly it wasn't even a wasn't even a close vote and that's what we've been using now that's what their, we're okay. right that is correct that's what we're using now so people who live, uh, live up in stony hill mm -hmm. th uh, this spring and early summer have seen uh, far horizons green pastures quaker ridge quaker ridge yeah uh, get 
get done, uh, and they're, they're, they're completely done now except for the yellow stripes that and are going to go down. They did a great job. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're so much nicer. Yeah. Uh, next up is Weed Road and Walnut Hill. Then we go downtown to Reservoir Street, then out to Aunt Patty's Lane. Now, some people have asked about Aunt Patty's Lane. Why, you know, that's a, that's a cul-de-sac. Why would you do that um, before you do some of the thoroughfares? Right. Well, it, it is a cul-de-sac, but... Uh, it hasn't been paved since 1978. <laughs> oh, wow. And there's a part of it that goes over a stream that's literally collapsing. So oh. it's, you, you, we either tell people to take their rubber dinghies across or right. we'll have to get it done. But so we're, we're, we're going to do about six and a half miles of roadway this summer. But you really, the next project is we, we really have to come back and say, all right, we've done part of this. Now we need three more years worth of funding for it to, to complete it. Because... They didn't get better, especially this past winter. <laughs> exactly. And you did Old Hollyville, too? That yeah, area, right. By up to Route 6? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, now, that was actually a federal oh, era that was, grant. Oh, okay. that, that was federal highway funds, that, uh, otherwise known as Obama Bucks, or okay. whatever acronym you want to call it. Okay. It actually was uh, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act funds. Okay. Um, that is nearly complete. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, because, because it is an election season. Mm -hmm. There's some misinformation being... Mm -hmm you know, spewed around. There's one section about uh, 100 feet long that's, mm -hmm. n that's, that's still narrow. Right. And so that's being used as a criticism to say, see, they didn't get that done. Well, the, we're waiting. We have you're, to wait for AT&T to move the telephone poles. And you are going to widen Yes, yes that, that's are. being widened. Right. The new telephone poles have been installed. And AT&T has to come and move the wires from the old ones to the new ones. Then we'll finish then it. But that, that, you know, who knows? That's on their schedule, but we can't complete it. Until so that's it's, done. it's nothing that the town is doing wrong, nothing that our highway crew is doing right. wrong. It's, it'll be done when that's, when that's ready. Okay, so right now we have about 25% done, right? Well, at, at the end of this summer, yeah, okay. we'll have about 25% done. All right, great. So then yep. we have uh, the rest to complete. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, there's a, a committee that has a new committee that's been formed, the Economic Outreach Committee, yes. that you yep. Um, created. Yep, that's correct. And can you talk about what, sure. how that was created and why? Sure. And, and who is on that committee? Oh, now you're going to ask me to remember well, names. Well, not names, but yeah. like um, how many people? And, yeah, and yeah they, I think there's seven people on that committee. L let, me, let me reel back a little bit and talk about the Economic Development Commission. Okay which has existed for many years and is part of the town charter. The, okay. the town has had a e EDC, as it's called. Um, now, the Economic Development Commission, for many years, um, concerned itself primarily with selling the property that is at Francis J. Clark Industrial Park. Now, a lot of people don't know that that's actually a town development. Right. And it was uh, created with a grant from the state, from uh, the Office of Economic Development out of Hartford. So uh, unlike Berkshire Corporate Park, which is, is privately owned and operated, mm -hmm. Francis J. Clark Park is, is, is a town project, mm -hmm. and the town has been selling those, those lots in there for many years. So the EDC kind of gravitated to being the, the primary developer of the industrial park. Okay. Now, when, when I was first elected, I saw a great need to expand economic opportunities throughout the town, mm -hmm. um, but they, they were very, they're very tied up with the park, you know, the EDC is, mm -hmm. so I created this thing called the Economic Outreach Reach. Committee. Okay. Uh, it's an ad hoc committee. It's not designed by charter, so it, it, I gave it a two-year lifespan, and then we'll see if it's working and see if we want to keep it. Okay. But this, it's interesting. The way this has gravitated is the, the Economic Outreach Commission is now in charge of marketing the town to the people in our area. In other words, their job is to bring people to Bethel to shop, to visit Bethel. You can almost look at them as sort of like a tourism board in a way. And they work closely with the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. to, to uh, make that happen. Mm -hmm. Now the Economic Development Commission uh, had the opportunity to appoint some new people on that just within the last six months. So that has been retasked in a way, and I've given it the mission that it had originally more than 20 years ago, which is to mind the economic health of the entire town, mm -hmm. not just the, the industrial park. Okay. So their job now is to analyze the types of business that would be best in a community like a community ours. Or community or so, yeah, okay. so, so their job is to bring in the businesses, bring in jobs, bring in new companies, and then 
EOC, the economic outreach, bring is to bring the shoppers in. Keep people here. That's right. Okay, so the two can like meld that's, together. That's that's okay. exactly right. Uh, they've both been. There's a lot of work to do. Uh, the EOC mm -hmm. and the EDC have cooperated on a survey of our businesses, and mm -hmm. what we're doing is taking an inventory of the types of businesses that are here, and then talking to those business owners and saying, what do you like about doing business in Bethel, and what don't you like, and how can your town help you? market your services better okay. and, and that's going to that's part of our strategy that's great. Okay. Uh, so as we as we sit here tonight we're in the new fiscal year uh, one of the things you're going to see is wayfinding signs that will kind of connect our Stony Hill area to downtown and vice versa. Oh. So uh, when you're you know, up in the Stony Hill area, you'll see signs that will say, this way to Bethel's historic village. Oh. And it'll take you right into town and then vice versa. Nice. From town, it'll oh, take you out there. Great. Okay, very nice. So it, it's going to be a series of small improvements to, to try to you know, bring business into town. Right, and, this can't happen business. overnight. It's right. going to take some time. Yeah. Now, uh, a new, um, one of the new uh, things happening, part of this whole economic uh, process is the farmer's market. Yes. And that's happening yes. all summer long. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Every every Thursday night, in fact, uh, mm -hmm. as we taped tonight, mm -hmm. I, I was just at the farm market and, until I came here to the studio enjoying my pulled pork sandwich mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. uh, from one of our, our favorite Bethel vendors. And this is where? This where is, is on the lawn of the municip municipal center right by the gazebo. Okay, great. Um, and, you know, the, this is just one small piece, but it's a big one. It's yeah. an important one because it's a quality of life improvement. Uh, we're, in, we're really only into our second uh, farm market night. It, it's, a, it's every Thursday, and the opening was, was last Thursday. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the, the foot traffic has been great. Uh, in, on the opening night, many of the vendors sold out within the first hour. Wow. So this week, they brought a lot more food to sell. We have... Um, Fresh produce, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. and the corn is up. This mm -hmm. is the first night we had corn. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, grass-fed beef, um, an olive oil and balsamic vinegar and supply. And some organic stuff too, right? Yes, yeah, or, organic. yeah organics. Okay. Okay. Um, prepared foods like uh, the barbecue outlet, uh, craft bread maker, wow. handmade bread supplier, wow. and it's just delicious. 3, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m.? 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And if it rains, do we not have it? Or Rain or shine. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. All the, all the vendors come with, with canopies. Great. Yep, so it's just like any other farm market. No, I mean, if there's a howling windstorm, right, that's, right. that's something else. But, but you know, a little rain, nope, they'll, they'll be there. Great. Yep. That's, that's a great thing to have this summer. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to talk a little bit about the old train station. Yes. Because something else that was in the article yes. uh, when you made your announcement right. was talking about the um, parking lot. Yes. There. And we're, we are redoing that yeah. at no cost to taxpayers. That's which right. Which is a great thing. So I'd like you to explain how that's being done. Well, let me, let me go back. And you're right. This is another area that I, there's some misinformation out in mm -hmm. the community that it's important that people know the truth yeah. about that. Let me, let me go back and talk a little bit about the old train station just in general. Okay. Um, that was built in 1910. And um, there, I think about 12 or 15 years ago, the uh, state of Connecticut built a new station farther up on uh, up Library Place. Right, right. So then the old train station, actually, uh, I, I wasn't aware of this till recently, but the state of Connecticut was going to sell it to a private developer. Oh. And the town of Bethel said, whoa, wait a minute. I mean, this is really our only municipal parking. We want that. Right. So Bethel negotiated to purchase this mm -hmm. or to assume uh, control of it. And the uh, State Department of Transportation did that, but with a caveat in, in, it's in the deed. And that is that uh, the town can use the old train station for whatever it wants to, including leasing it to private enterprise if it Wasn't wants it to. Was it a museum or something? At one, what was it was it? an art gallery. Uh, art for, gallery. Yeah, it was right. leased okay. out by an art gallery. Okay. But if the town leases it, 100% of the funds that are collected by leasing it must go be used to, to maintain the property. Oh, okay. So in other words, the town can lease it for whatever it's worth in the in the marketplace, but that money has to go into a separate fund and it can only be used to maintain the building and the parking area. Uh, so uh, uh, now when I was running for office two years ago, there were several business interests that approached me and mm -hmm. said, you know, we would, the, the, the train station sitting vacant, it's basically rotting away, mm -hmm. you know, we don't understand why the town won't lease it to mm -hmm. anybody. So shortly after being elected, uh, I had the Department of Public Works put out an RFP, a request for proposals. Uh, I, there were four or five business 
interests that came through and toured the place. And the, the, one of the stipulations was you assume this building as is. You know, mm. you, you can lease it. You tell us what you think it's worth to pay for it. You're responsible for the, the upkeep. You're responsible for the oh. renovations and so on. Okay. So uh, I established a uh, committee of people that I completely recused myself from. I did not participate in mm -hmm. the selection process at all. Mm -hmm. And the, the winning bid came from Bethel Cycle. Right. They're there now, yeah. So to make a long story short, uh, they have put close to two hundred thousand dollars worth of renovation into that building wow they've completely rebuilt the bottom floor which had rotted away like the wow. floorboards were actually collapsing uh, repainted it you know put in a new heating system put in new plumbing and the there there was about thirty nine thousand dollars left in the the train station account from the previous tenant and that money is what was used to repave the parking nice, lot nice. and put in drainage so that the building won't rot away. Nice, that's wonderful. So, so what the town has now is a, is a very successful, thriving business mm -hmm. down there, which is bringing new customers mm -hmm. to Bethel. That's mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, it has a refurbished parking lot and drainage, and neither one of them costs the taxpayers a dime. That's terrific. That's great. And we do collect future uh, lease payments from, from the business that's in there now from the bike shop, and that money will be used to... Uh, we can use it for plowing to, right. to relieve yeah. our town crews. We can use it for further parking improvements in there. So it's a win-win. It's a I call it a public-private yeah, partnership. That is a win-win situation. Yeah, that's, that's a great situation. Um, another uh, building mm -hmm. in our town that I'd like to talk about is our library. And I, I was just in there a couple of days ago. I mm -hmm. went to check out a book. And I went in, and there's tons of kids. They were doing all yes. kinds of projects in there. They had something going on. I'm not sure what. Right. But I could see that it was really, really very well used. And, you know, you hear about, well, the Internet and blah, 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 and people don't use the library, and that is not true. Well. Because I, I was in there myself checking out a book that I need to read for school. Um, right. So I'd like to talk about that building a little bit and mm -hmm. how much use it really does get and how important it is for our town that we have that library. Well, yeah. Actually, I just read an article in uh, the New York Times that nationally library usage is way, way up. And that's right. not unusual uh, because... Uh, in, in times of economic distress, um, people turn to libraries. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, they cancel their expensive cable services. Mm -hmm. They don't rent movies. Mm -hmm. they, they use the library. And mm -hmm. one of the most important things is that, uh, and, and many people who, who may not have applied for a job don't know this yet today, but in today's market, if you can't apply for a job online, you can't apply. I, most that's I, true. I, I actually don't know of any companies that will accept a paper resume. Uh, it's all online. That is so true. I, uh, I'm a teacher, and I, all teacher jobs are, are done online now. Well, and I, even go, like Kohl's. I was thinking of a part-time job this summer at Kohl's, and it's online. Yes. It's all online. Well, uh, it, the year that I ran for election two years ago, I, I was also working as a uh, career uh, counselor. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I know that um, these things are done online. You, you must be proficient with Word. You must yep. be proficient with the Internet and mm -hmm. the computer. And if people are suffering economically and they cannot afford to have Internet services at home, they go to the library. Mm -hmm. So libraries have become even more important mm -hmm. in this day and age. Now, our library has, just like the National Trend, has seen uh, much increased utilization, a lot more people there. Mm -hmm. They do great kids programs. The parents love it. Um, and we are in a position where this is going to be one of my top priorities in the next term mm -hmm. is that the time has come that we must finish that upper floor. Yes, definitely. Uh, there are a variety of grants and private donations that will begin expiring within the next year if it's not done. So we okay. really, this is going to be a priority. We've, we've selected an architect and we just need to put the final pieces in place, but it's, it's got to happen soon. Great. It's, it's a wonderful building and, you know, uh, it does provide so yeah. many services. And um, it, you even touched on, you can rent movies and videos. It's oh, not yeah. just books. You know, you do so much there. Right. And, and the computers and everything. Um, another great um, addition or success, I think, is our Pro Access uh, Teen Center. Oh, right. That we, right. Um, not we, but, well, Right. Not me, but that has you know happened. We haven't right. had a teen center for a couple of years. Right. We desperately needed one up and running. We had the program running, yes. but there was no central location for the kids to go right. and congregate. They were having um, Hilda Delucia does a great job running that program. Right. And she has activities all the time, but there was no central hub. No. And now we have one. Yes, correct. Uh, that that is. Uh, I, I'll tell you what. The the credit for that goes to Richie Straten. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when when Richie and I took office two years ago, uh, th we had a problem because the 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 old town hall that had been used as a teen center had been closed for several years mm -hmm. because of lead and uh, asbestos, asbestos uh, yeah. problems in there. And 
it, and it couldn't be used. Um, and Hilda was running the teen center program basically out of the trunk of her car. Yeah. yeah. And she does a fantastic job. So what used to be a dozen kids, you know, not mm -hmm. really doing much mm -hmm. some years ago, became a program where she had 50 kids in the program, then 100, Huge. then 200. Huge. And they literally had nowhere to run the program. So uh, I, I have a, a great deal of uh, good things to say about the Bethel business community because so many of our local retailers stepped up and said, well, listen, you, you know, on Wednesday night this week you can use the yep. space over here. They're all over the town. Yeah, Perry yeah. Anastakis at yeah. uh, Famous Pizza was very generous with mm -hmm. the space that he had. They did manicures. They did yes, all kinds they, of stuff they, in the different businesses. But the program continued to go. They needed a place to yeah. stay. And then uh, we, we got a lucky break. The uh, Visiting Nurses Association, which had used the entire lower floor of the North Wing, mm -hmm. bought their own place out on Stony Hill Road and moved out. Now, we didn't have a budget to do anything with that, so Richie Strayton made a proposal to the Board of Selectmen. He said, we can fix this up with volunteer labor, and we can make it into a temporary teen space. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start applying for grants, both federal and state grants, to right. build a permanent teen center annex on the other side of the building adjacent to the gym. Uh, oh, that's so, great. Yeah. This has been accomplished within the last six months. Yeah. The, the, the Richie recruited volunteers. He worked there several nights a week, sometimes by himself, yeah. and the place is beautiful. Yeah. Um, now the plan is, to, uh, we, we, right now I have three different grant applications pending, to, mm -hmm. you know, waiting to see if we can put together funding to create a permanent teen center. And when we do, then our plan is to take that temporary teen center and turn that over to the seniors and make that an expanded senior center. Okay, great. Because so they're, they're running out of room for the, pro the programs they do, yeah, too. Yeah, they're very active. They have a lot of things. Bethel has one of the most active senior centers in this mm -hmm. whole area. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Kathy Oles does a great job with her program. And, and so we really want to give them the space to expand as well. Okay, great. Wonderful. Well, that's, I'm just really thrilled. I mean, I have two teenagers, and you know, I'm thrilled to have that teen center going. And, and these kids have somewhere to go. So that's just a great thing. Great. Um, I'd like you to speak a little bit about what you feel were your um, greatest successes over the past two years in, in office. There have been many, but what do, you, what do you take most pride in? We, you know, we've, um, th there, there's, there's quite a few things that I, that I look back on and, and say I think, we're, I think we're doing a good job. The road program is one, the, um, yeah. You know the pro access, the teen center, right, right. Uh, the economic development activities, which are ongoing, and right. that, but it's beginning to yield some fruit. But I, I really have to look back and say, one of the. Uh, 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 let me preface this with sure. a story. Sure. Uh, shortly after the election two years ago, I remember the, the Danbury News Times editorial staff ran a page, you know, congratulating everybody who ran for mm -hmm. anything and mm -hmm. saying, okay, we're off to a, you know, now all of these towns, Bethel, Brookfield, Newtown, they all have you know, new, new elected officials or re-elected officials, and we wish everybody luck. And they went town by town in this editorial and, and said, okay, now in Brookfield, uh, you know, there's a road program coming up, and, they, 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 you know, uh, Mr. Davidson wants to do some parks, and, you know, and, and New Fairfield had its issues. Mm -hmm. And when they got to Bethel, all they said was, this is, I'm not kidding about mm -hmm. this, you go back and find it in the archives, mm -hmm. we want them to get along. Mm -hmm because the, the political environment had been so toxic for right. so many years. And I think we've done that. I think, I, so I think yeah. that we have raised a positive profile for the town. Um, you know, the three of us, you know, obviously, uh, Richie is my running, ra running mate. We, we work together as a team. But I got to tell you, Paul Zadkowski, the other selectman, is just as important member of our team. And you work, all three work all well three together. Of, one, and, one, yes. One, and prior to your administration, that wasn't happening. No, I that, mean, that was, was not real, happening. It was a real issue. In fact, uh, one of the, f the the first commissions I created. In fact, we didn't even talk about this because I almost forgot about it. We, but remember the transfer station issue? That's right. It was losing fifty, sixty, That's seventy thousand right. dollars yep. a year, and we created a, uh, a a committee of experts to look at that, including you know former board of finance members, former first selectmen, mm -hmm. business executives, and um, you know. I asked Paul to, to be the, the, uh, the ad hoc uh, representative to the Board of Selectmen and participate that, and he has been an important team member. And so I think the, the, the bipartisan cooperation is something that uh, Bethel desperately needed, and I think that that's one of the hallmarks. I do, too. I think, I think it's great that, you know, that's happening mm -hmm. because it, we, it's such a small town, you yeah. know, and everybody knows everybody. You don't want to have that, 
you know, animosity going on and all that aggravation going on. It's not necessary. Well, look how much you've done without yeah. that happening. You know? Well, if you ask every, anybody on the street, anybody, you know, what they'll say is, okay, when the, when the campaigning is over, we just want everybody to work for the, the voters, you know, for right. the town, for the community. For the whole town, and, right. and that's something that we have tried to live every single day on the job. Right, good for you. I, 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 and I, I think it does show. I mean, you know, you don't hear people talking about um, people not getting along anymore. We're talking right. about what is getting done or what needs to get done, and that's really what we should be talking about, not mm -hmm. who's arguing with who. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to talk about that. That's true. Um, you know, I know why I love my job. I, I get up every day. I'm happy to go to my job. Tell me what you love about your job. We only have a couple <laughs> minutes, but I want to touch on that because it's very clear that you do love it, I and, do. and you you say that. Why do you love working as first selectman? Uh, I love the uh, the contact with the people of Bethel. Um, every day can be different. Uh, every day is a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, doing things like uh, you know legislative process, working out the details of the road plan. Mm -hmm communicating it to people these are long-term things that I have to I have to focus on every right. day I have to devote a piece of my day to some of these longer-term things but in between that you know the phone rings every day yeah people and won't I'm come in every day to, and stop you there because I called you and you picked up your own phone and yeah. I was very impressed yeah. with that that you actually answered your own phone yeah so I'd like to say that on camera I was really impressed that you I, did that I can't always but I try but to that was great but I try to but you know, it it gives me a lot of satisfaction when people call up and they say, you know what, I, I've got a problem. I don't know who else to turn to. Yeah. Sometimes I can't help them, but I can I can get them connected with people who can. Good. Sometimes mm -hmm. I sometimes they just need to know which way to turn, and sometimes I can actually step in and, and help them. And there's just like you help better. me, you know, with my well, yeah. problem. Yeah. So yeah, that's great. Uh, I, I like the creative uh, problem solving process, and it and it gives me a lot of satisfaction to do that. Great. Um, I have a question, um, well, a comment, too, about our budgets. Our last, we only have 30 seconds, but our last two budgets have passed on yes. the last two years on the first vote, which yes. I think is a great um, testament to you and mm -hmm. to Dr. Chesley for the Board of Ed budget. Right. Uh, that was a great thing for our town. We didn't have to go through multiple referendums, and I just want to congratulate you on that because thank that's you. been great. And I, we only have about 15 seconds left, mm -hmm. so I'd like to say thank you for being our guest tonight. You're doing a great job. I'm um, very happy to sit here and talk with you tonight about all the wonderful things that are happening. It's great. Bethel is just like such a great place right now to just go around, to live and, 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 and do all the things we have, you know, for the kids and for the adults and all the things we have. And I have to say goodbye.